from the desk at Old Mates. You're watching Backyard Tech. It's Sunday morning, and that means... Apart from life getting in the way, I managed to get some content out this week. As always, we'll look at the week in review. We'll look at what's on the cards in theory for the week ahead, middle part of this week's vlog. A number of sports stars around Australia have taken time out of the game to deal with mental health issues. Is getting them off social media a way of combating it? All that and whatever else comes to mind, coming up. This is the Backyard Tech Vlog. Hey, how's it going? Thank you for tuning in. It is Sunday, it is Vlog time again as always here at the Backyard Tech Channel. And as I said at the top of the video, life sort of got in the way, but I managed to get videos out throughout the week, which is what I want to be able to do. I hate it when I can't get at least some videos out every day. Even if I only get two out, it's better than none. At least to keep the content going out. May not always be quality. Actually, it's never quality. <laughs> so maybe 0.1 of a percent of it is. Maybe 0.1 of a percent. <laughs> It's just gone quarter past seven in the morning here, and before we get into the rest of this week's vlog. Now, as is tradition here on a Sunday morning at the Backyard Tech Channel for our vlogs, if you went out last night and decided to double down on the slops and turps because Friday night's effort wasn't really up to scratch, and you've woken up this morning feeling a hell of a lot less than seedy, so you're really feeling like absolute garbage, then I've got one solution that may take you from feeling like you are in a real problem to just feeling seedy. May not make you feel completely human yet, but at least you'll feel slightly better. Coffee time. That's good. That's good coffee. Our, our morning's already off to an early start this morning. The, the other half's mobile phone rang at uh, 10 to 6 this morning uh, for a 7 a.m. start. So it's already chaotic here for a Sunday morning, which is not necessarily ideal. Let's face it. It's definitely not going to be a lazy day today for old mate. I can tell you that right now. Alrighty, let's jump straight into the week in review. And we kicked it off with MX-19 installs from last Saturday week. Um, and all the MXs that I now have running. Um, I think from here on in, as far as old mate's concerned, I'm really only going to run three Linuxes. Um, the bedroom laptop's got Farron. Every other, just about every other machine in the house is MX and my main PC windows and then obviously my beloved open man driver so farron open man driver and mx are now old mates in no particular order mind you old mates default linux operating systems um i know i've supported ghost bsd but i'm so disheartened with unix now that i'm not even going to touch a unix operating system um, if I, when I finally get around to getting the money up to fix the e-server, I'm just going to drop Solaris on it. Gbound one, Greggy knows my plan. We've discussed my plan. Um, I'm keeping that between the two of us. Um, but apart from that, I'm not going to be looking at Unix operating systems anymore. I'm walking away. I've said that. Um, FreeBSD 13 destroyed me. Utterly destroyed me. So I'm not, that, that, that's final. Um, going on, we did the Q&A and advice video regarding what number plate lights do I run and am I going to put LEDs in it? The answer is I run festoon bulbs and no I'm not. And I am in no way, shape or form am I doing a full LED conversion on the thing. It had cost me thousands, over a thousand bucks to do it. I don't, I've got better things to spend a thousand bucks on. We then took a look at the two big Technic speakers that I bought home and discovered they weren't exactly in fantastic condition. We then uh, found two replacement crossovers for them. We had our Sunday convos. We had the TBIM promo. Uh, we then had a food video from Sunday night. 
The other half's homemade zucchini, carrot, and bacon quiche. It's absolutely a bowl terror of a quiche, that. And I'm not a big quiche fan, but it's bloody beautiful. We then did the news story about another Microsoft stuff-up regarding sending out business-orientated updates to Windows Home and Pro, Windows 10 Home and Pro users, I'm sorry, when they shouldn't have sent it out. More way of bloating out Windows. Then the breaking news video about Google buying Fitbit for 2.1 billion US dollars, and I'm the only one in the world that didn't see that happening. I was quite surprised about that. We then took a look at what is one of my two favourite... I sound like I'm half drunk, don't I? <laughs> two favourite Linux operating systems, MX19, the best MX there's been. Right, it's absolutely phenomenally good MX Linux 19 with the 414XFCE desktop. It's quick, it's fast, it's responsive. And look, I know I'm using mechanical hard drives, but it's quick enough for me. I don't need it any faster. I've said this before, I don't need speed, I need stability. If a hard drive takes an extra 10, 20 seconds to load a program, I don't give a stuff. I don't need things now. You know, I'm one of these few people around the world. I can actually wait. We then began our Technics speaker restoration series. Uh, part one, we had a look at the issues with one of the speakers. We had our Monday convos. We had the Tuesday promo. We did the bizarre news story about some of uh, a studies being conducted over in the UK. Uh, apparently, some of us have been using our dish dishwashers the wrong way round. We then took a look at Rosa Linux Fresh R11, and it is a big no from me. I don't like it. I'm surprised. Um, the vitriol I've copped in unpublished comments is off the charts. Those who love Rosa, that's fine. You can love it. I don't. I don't like it. When I compare it to Open Man Driver, I don't like it. Uh, we then got uh, the Speaker Restoration Part 2, looking at the other box, which was in far worse condition. We then uh, did Part 3 of the Technic Speaker Restoration, cleaned out both cabinets. We had our Tuesday Convos. We had the Midweek Update. We had a news video about the Democratic Party over in the US proposing a new federal agency to fight for citizens' privacy when it comes to big tech giants. Uh, I then put a video of my opinion on that over on the Patreon page. Don't forget to check the Patreon page out too, guys. Um, we then had a look at an old-fashioned email client for those that like Outlook Express. We had our midweek convos. We had the Thursday promo. We did the bizarre news story uh, that really shocked us. And that was a, uh, a uh, woman whose ex-partner was able to control everything about her car and phone and everything like that. I then put the uh, discussion video up. And that's garnered quite a few views. I'm quite surprised about that. Why people hate Windows. A lot of interesting comments on that. And there have been a lot of comments I won't publish due to vitriol, language, explicit stuff. I'm not publishing them. Um, but very interesting comments, a lot of feedback on it, and all very valid. We had the Thursday Convos, we had the TGIF promo, and then sort of life and NBN got in the way of Friday's content. Managed to get absolutely nothing out other than the promo and the convo. Then yesterday, wasn't that bad a day, we did the news story about Bill Gates and his excuse as to why he believes Windows Phone failed. And in this week's The Weekly Wrap Up, the other news stuff, I'm going to give you my opinion on that story. We then had the uh, bizarre news about a mystery wave of text messages have left many, many, many Americans completely and utterly confused and baffled. Some of them receiving text messages dating as far back as February. Apparently a maintenance update went south on that. Doesn't surprise me. 
We then uh, did Technic Speaker Restoration Part 4 and uh, got one box up and running. Sounds absolutely beautiful. Coming up today, we're going to do the other box, by the way, today as well. So that stick around for that. And we had uh, last night's Saturday Convos. So there we are. Not a bad week, actually. Um, what I managed to get out. I should have counted that, shouldn't I? Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30, 31, 32, 33. So 33 videos out for the week. It's not bad. It's not great. Friday would have obviously given me my 35 videos for the week but you know unfortunately life sometimes gets in the gets in the guts in the way i've done it again sometimes life guts in the way sometimes sometimes life gets in the way guts in the way <laughs> sounds, sounds like you've put your guts in the way of life doesn't it <laughs> all righty now as a lot of you are very much well aware, um, I do have mental health problems. What I have neglected to tell you is for the past six months, we've been backtracking a lot of my problems. And uh, this harks back to the days where mental health was not a topic to be discussed. And it would appear as though my anxiety and depression has been there from the get-go. And my ADD, rather than ADHD, but my ADD sort of masked it. And then with the way life's been for me over the past seven years, it came to fruition. This year here in Australia, we've had a number of sports professionals pull the pin for the year or multiple weeks to deal with their mental health. Now, some of it has been brought on by their appearance on social media. Um, for example, um, and I'm just picking a random example at this, all right? Now, I don't know about the rest of the world, you, my European viewers, UK viewers, US viewers, Asian viewers, whatever, you can tell me if it's a similar thing. Um, here, here in Australia, for example, say you play footy, Aussie rules, basically, we call it footy. Um, my UK viewers are going to have a dummy spit because to them, soccer is football, but we call it football here in Australia and we call football soccer. You get my drift. Anyway, um, you can be playing for a AFL team, and you're on the Twitter, you're on the Facebook, etc., etc., etc. And let's say you come up, you might be playing for say Gold Coast Suns, which is a fairly weak team, and you come up against the might of say Hawthorne or Collingwood or someone like that and they trounce you they absolutely hammer you into the ground by you know 10 12 13 goals the vitriol on twitter and facebook etc against you is off the charts and a lot of it can bring you into a really bad place we all know about the black dog once it's there you're in a world of pain. And if you don't act quickly enough, you're in real trouble. One of my viewers and subscribers and um, you know, fairly active members of the backyard tech community can relate to that. Is the, is the solution for sports people to get off social media to reduce their mental health stress. There's been many conversations about doing it.
Um, personally, for those who are headstrong and can put up with it and just blot it out, fine. But for those that are not headstrong in any way, shape or form, you need to get off it. There are many sports people who avoid social media. Now, Ash Barty, world number one female tennis player. We've got an Aussie as a female tennis player and she's number one. She, um, she doesn't do a lot. She blots it out. She's headstrong. She's a very strong girl. But some sports people are not strong enough. They're strong physically and they can... You know, it doesn't matter what sport you're playing, they, they are physically strong. But mentally, the vitriol can push them. Now, Majak Dor plays for North Melbourne. He did something that could have ended his, not just his career, but his life. Because of social media. the vitriol against him which some of it was racism as well but the general consensus was that he was just a weak football player he's not a weak football player you watch him play for North Melbourne and he's 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 fantastic you know okay yes I follow Essendon but I do have respect for some of some better players in other clubs in in the AFL same goes for rugby league, rugby union, tennis, golf, soccer, whatever. Some of these, to use the generic term, trolls, are just out to destroy people. We know here on YouTube, you get a lot of them. I have eight. But, Sometimes you get some people, some sports people, who just aren't strong enough. Physically, they are like a brick shit house. But mentally, they might be strong mentally to play the game, but from a life point of view, the black dog's like six foot behind them. We've had cricketers leave to deal with mental health in the lead up to the summer series of cricket here in Australia. Many football players this year have called time to take a break from the sport and the club the footy clubs have basically said get yourself sorted out we don't want to know you until you're, you're right which is not a bad thing the, you know it is getting some of these sports people off social media a way of saving their mental health I mean what I don't get or don't understand is there are plenty I know Victorians are sports mad that's our one reputation we are sports sports loving state Melbourne in particular I don't get if if you're a sport lover and you love your sport you follow a specific sport and whether it's a team or an individual and your team or individual loses, why you've got to go after them in such a vitriolic manner? Do they not get that it can upset someone's mental health and mental capacity? Or are they just venting? But even venting can upset that player or team. You know, it's... It, it's akin to taking out in a sports team, you go after the you know strongest person, it's akin to them going out because of mental health and all of a sudden the teams become weaker. And then what do you do? You unload on them again and you keep unloading and unloading. It's just one big vicious circle. I'm not sure getting them off social media is the answer. Giving them mental strength might be the answer, but we're all different. No two humans are wired the same. Um, you know, as, as we've discovered with old mate, I've had mental health problems 
since the day I was born. Depression, anxiety, and ADD, all rolled into one mental health bubble. They thought I may have been on the, on the spectrum. I'm not, but I look like it because of my coping mechanisms. I am inflexible by nature, which people on the autism spectrum can be. Now, social media is a fantastic tool, but it's also a fantastic tool for vitriol against everyone and anyone, but in particular sports people. I mean, you're supposed to look up to them. If they have a bad day, they have a bad day. You don't go after them. You don't, you don't unload and vent on them and then all of a sudden turn around and try and defend yourself venting on them. We all have bad days. You know, a, a, a professional sportsman isn't going to perform at 100% of the time for the entire season. They are going to have a form slump somewhere. But then why go after them? Why rip them a new one? What's that going to do for them? It's all right, you've vented. Now you've made them feel terrible. And then, you know, they might come back next week and have a ball terror of a game and you're applauding them. Oh, you give me a break. I don't think getting them off social media is the answer. I think training their brain to ignore it might be a better way of doing it. It's a bit of a cop-out type way of fixing the problem, but you know, sometimes you need social media. You need the Twitter, you need the Facebook. You, you need that to see what's happening sometimes. <coughs> so I don't think getting them off social media is the thing. I think training them to deal with it might be a better way of doing it. Or give them coping mechanisms might even be a better way of doing it. It's an option, isn't it? There we are. So just my little little take on it. Alrighty. Now, what's on the cards for the week ahead, theoretically speaking? Um, I've been uh, I'm, I got asked by a viewer of the um, convos Arabic if I would look at the latest release from Open Indiana. Uh, no, I won't be. I'm not looking at it. So we're not going to worry about that. But there are a couple of operating systems I want to have a look at uh, this week ahead. We'll have news, we'll have bizarre news, we'll have convos. Um, also, some more audio stuff. I do have a couple of Q&A and advice videos coming up this week as well. One particularly with the 80 and one particularly to do with uh, home theatre. So they're coming up this week as well. Um, and some other bits and pieces too. So those who were hoping I'd have a look at the latest Open Indiana, not going to happen. Sorry guys, I am not interested in looking at Unix operating systems. Um, I've been defeated before and come back to Unix. Um, this time I'm defeated entirely. Not touching it, sorry. So... If other people want to have a look at the latest release of Open Indiana, go for broke. But from Backyard Tech, I'm not touching it. Simple as that. Um, so, a fair bit on the cards. Convos. And assuming life doesn't get in my way this week. It's a big assumption. I should be able to get out four or five videos a week. Although, as Adam Anderson will point out, I've probably just gone and jinxed myself. But hey. Haha. <laughs> So there we are. Vlog done. Um, let us know what you think. Should sports people get off social media to save their mental health? Or should we give them the coping mechanisms to deal with it so that that black dog is more than six foot behind them? Because once it's on your shoulder, we all know what can happen. We've all heard about it and everything. So let us know what you think. Anyway, there we are. Vlog done. Stick around. The weekly wrap-up's coming up shortly as well, and we'll have more 
on the Technics speaker restoration. Catch you throughout the day. Have a good one. Cheers.